You know, it's one thing to have a dream. It's another thing to work on that dream. And it's a completely other thing to have a community of people supporting you like you have been supporting me on this channel. We are 2,000 subscriber plus and counting. And for that, I am very grateful. I did a surprise live stream for five minutes just to thank the community. And I want to take this opportunity now before we start this next episode to thank you for being here. If this is the first time that you're meeting me, my name is Kamga. I am a writer. As you can see, I am a Cameroonian living in the US. And on this channel, I make essays, reviews, and reactions just like this one. This particular video is a recommendation from a bunch of people on the channel that left a lot of comments. So if you're watching this and at any point you want me to do a reaction to any video, please feel free to leave a comment. I see all my comments. I have a huge backlog of comments right now for multiple reasons, including the fact that I'm working a full-time job while finding time to make these videos, which I love. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to be responding to every single comment. And today we are doing Geography Now. Cameroon, which is my home country. So this video was recommended by uh, a couple of people. I'll put up the comments here real quick on the screen. You can see them. And uh, yeah, so Meaza Jember, she said, oh, he, wait, I can't see the picture clearly. Sorry. If you are a she, probably she. I have a feeling it's she. Are you she? Yes, you are she. <laughs> Subscribe. Yes, for Geography Now Cameroon. Next, we have Kelsey Stubbs, who said... Yes, do Geography Now Cameroon and also do the other episodes where they did on African countries like Somalia and Seychelles. And I think Rubble, Rubble did say something here. Rubble said do a reaction to every Geography Now for African countries. And I did say that's a pretty pretty darn good idea. <laughs> and finally, we have uh, my brother here from another mother, my Cameroonian YouTuber, uh, Chimex, who says, yes, do Geography Now for Cameroon. Let's know what foreigners think about our country. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing geography now. Cameroon. So if you haven't watched my previous reaction, I did I did a geography now Ethiopia. I'm going to put up the link in the description here. You can see it there, at the end of this video, there's going to be a playlist with all the reactions that we're doing so far on the channel. So you can definitely watch those uh, videos there. So right now, what I'm going to do is pull up this guy right here switching to our viewing screen and then we're going to get ready. So this video has um, what past 800,000 views. It was done in 2015. That's a pretty long time ago, but it's a history of, I mean, it's geography now, Cameron. So I don't expect anything to be different. So let's, let's, let's go right into the video, right? Let's go right in. Testing, testing. Is this mic working? Testing. Nope, it's not. All right. Episode two with no audio. <laughs> I love Barbie. The first time I saw him in Ethiopia, uh, the Ethiopia, what uh, geography now Ethiopia I was like who is called Barbie now I'm like hey I like this dude <laughs> audio is not working if you're using but you know how this feels like this comes Cameroon it's time to learn geography Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. When it comes to Africa, mostly, you're either on the English-speaking side or the French-speaking side. But then you go to Cameroon and you find this strange, unusual <laughs> hybrid anomaly. This hybrid anomaly was created because of the colonial suppression of the country initially colonized by the Germans and the British. And we'll find that out in the video. I mean, that's the whole point of this, right? You finally get to know about, uh, you find out more about my own country. So let's, let's let Barbie do his thing. But first... The flag of Cameroon is pretty simple. It's just a three-colored tri-band with green, red, and yellow defaced with a yellow star in the middle. Like a lot of other flags in Africa, the flag uses the pan-Africanist movement colors to symbolize mm. the freedom from colonization. I didn't even know that. So these are the pan-Africanist movement colors. Yes, I'm very ignorant. If you're watching this and thinking, like, how don't you know that? Well, I don't know. That's why I watch these videos, to learn more about my country and many other African countries. So you're welcome. The green is generally understood to symbolize the forests and the green landscape in the southern part of the country. The Makes yellow sense. standing for the savannas in the north. And the red, say it with me. Aha, you thought I was going to say the bloodshed of those who fought for the country. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look, this should have been the thumbnail. <laughs> Look at <it. laughs> This should have been the thumbnail. Let me move myself this way. <laughs> Oh man, this is... 
stands for unity. UNITY! Whereas oh. the star stands for the guidance of unity for the country. Keep in mind, this flag is almost completely identical to the flag of Senegal. The only difference is the color scheme in the middle. Huh. The band is yellow with a green star. I like to think- Look at that. Yellow with a green star. You just flip the colors. I never even knew that. Wow, this is cool. Think of it like this. When it comes to the middle band, it's camera red and sen green. I know that's terrible, but I, it works for me. Modern day Cameroon's boundaries kind of have a strange story behind it because it kind of has to do with three European countries and multiple tribal peoples in the area. Three European countries, multiple tribal people in the area. Well, that sounds like an understatement. It's not multiple tribal people, like 230 plus different tribes. So, Bobby, relax, bro. But first, although generally classified under the region of Central Africa, Cameroon is located in the crossroads between West Africa and Central Africa, right at the Bight of Bonny on the... Let me move this so you can see exactly what he's showing here. It looks like I'll be moving my screen around a lot in this particular video, huh? Well, we'll see. Gulf of Guinea, often referred to as between West Africa and Central Africa, right at the Bight of Bonny on the Gulf of Guinea. Bight of Bonny. I actually didn't know that was what it's called. It was just all like, oh, literal, like Douala. Often referred to as the Hinge of Africa, as it borders six other countries. Ha! Huh. This is uh, Nigeria, this is Chad, and this should be... I don't know. That's why I'm watching the video. Remember? To learn. I came here to learn. From a whole, the shape of the country has a narrow neck quarter in the north with a beak that makes it look like a cockatiel or a backwards unicorn duck. By the way, backwards unicorn duck, my sister came up with that joke. Ow! Whoa. Kind of like Afghanistan, the reason why the country is shaped like that kind of has to do with European history. In the quickest way I can summarize this, first the Germans took over, then the English, then the French, then after independence, the English sides had to decide whether they wanted to integrate with Nigeria or the rest of This is the part where I will know if this guy knows about the things that we've been dealing with because just one year after this video was made, 2016, the ongoing, it's still ongoing right now, civil crisis took place started in a country i remember because i was there right in boya when they were doing the marches and everything so he this man is about let me show my face this is my series. he's about to let me know if i should trust him or not based on what he says now all right let's see of cameroon the north sides chose nigeria and the south side chose Cam <sighs> well it's complicated that's not exactly how it happened. But let's carry on. Cameroon. This effectively carved out the northern borders of Cameroon, giving it its distinct narrow panhandle that reaches all the way up to Lake Chad, or what's left of Lake Chad. We'll talk about that in the next section. One thing you have to understand is that even though this island is incredibly close and off the coast of Cameroon, it is actually not part of Cameroon. It's Bioko Island, home to Malabo, the capital city of Equatorial Guinea, the only country in Africa that speaks Spanish. Yeah, wait till we get to that country. Cameroon is split up into 10 semi-autonomous regions. And when I say semi-autonomous, I kind of mean that in a very literal sense because in Africa, legislation kind of fades into obscurity. <laughs> I don't like how he just says in Africa, like, you know, there's this broad sweeping generalization of like in Africa, like just, like just, but I don't know how untrue that really is because to be honest, there are many... Yeah, it says autonomous is supposed to be regional. Well, at some point, it was provinces, and then the name was changed to regions, and then but it's still basically the same. Like, there's no almost no difference. Seriously. When you go into rural autonomous, I kind of mean that in a very literal sense because in Africa, legislation kind of fades into obscurity when you go into rural areas. With the exception of Litoral and Adamawa, each of these regions is pretty much named after the cardinal direction that it's located in. East, west. Adamawa. Not Adamawa. But I hear you, Bobby. I hear you. Looks like I need to move myself out of the screen for this one. West, north, center, and the top is the extreme north or far north. However, Cameroon actually has a lot of accidentally named places too. I mean, the name Cameroon comes from the Portuguese word Camarões, which means shrimp because they found shrimp in the rivers when they discovered the area. River of Browns, Rio dos Cameros. The capital is Yaoundé, located in the center region, and still retains a bit of its French colonial imprint from early days when it was part of the French Empire. However, in postmodern years, they've actually built an influx of unique Africanized high-rises with unique geometric shapes and forms inspired from indigenous patterns and... 
you know, I love my country. And then I watch this and I watch other, you know, African countries. And I'm like, what are we even doing? Like, really, guys, is this the best we can do? Like, really? Really? In architecture. I mean, just look at the CNPS building with its massive boulder. Shh, 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 just, just don't ask. Let it be. It's Africa. The largest and economically busiest city in Cameroon, though, is Doula. Located Douala. Douala. It's it's right there. It's D Du Du A La. Three syllables. Right on the coast of the Gulf, and of course, the largest and economically busiest city in Cameroon, though, is Doula, located right on the coast of the Gulf, and of course, hosts Cameroon's largest port and commercial industry. Basically, the most heavily populated areas are on the coasts, the center, the north, and everywhere else is pretty much just sparsely populated with little pods. What did he just say? I don't agree with that. Wait, 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 what? Wait, 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 what? Host Cameroon's largest port and commercial industry. Basically, the most heavily populated areas are on the coasts, the center, the north, and everywhere else is pretty much just sparsely populated with little pod towns that are interconnected with these small dirt roads that look like a spider's web with flies caught. Okay. This is probably going to be the first reaction that I don't have a lot of positive things to say about the speaker because this is not entirely true. And I'm not just saying this is different my country. You know I try to be as objective as possible. I was born and raised there and the way he's describing these dirt roads is not exactly true. We do have dirt roads. It may not be as large as many other roads, but now I feel like I'm just defending my country. <laughs> but I have to, you know? Patriotism, that's what it requires. You have to stand for your country, even if... There's a lot more work to do because what he, he describes it in a very Jesus. Little pods are on the coasts, the center, the north, and everywhere else is pretty much just sparsely populated with little pod towns that are interconnected with these small dirt roads that look like a spider's web with flies caught in it. Due to the fact that ground transportation is not really well... Pod cards, it looks like a spider's web with flies caught in it. Jesus, what a description, my friend. Well maintained, I mean only by a spider's web with flies caught in it. Due to the fact that ground transportation is not really well maintained, I mean only about 10% of Cameroon's road. Wait. What? 10% of Cameroon's roads are paved less than 10... Alright, this is 2015. I don't want to believe that this is true. Like... Was this... What is number just pulled up for Wikipedia? Can... Please, if you're watching this and you know... I don't know, maybe you studied like transportation or geography or something. Like, what? Really? Is it that bad? Roads are paved with tar. Many of the towns have small airplane runways that they receive mail and packages on sporadic occasions. Entrance into the forest is difficult sometimes, and the terrain can cause a lot of travel difficulties the further inland you go. Let's talk about that terrain, shall we? If you were going to see... You know, we, we discussed about this whole... Ad advertising situation on youtube and uh yeah we're not going to get an ad blocker because you know we need to watch the ads and support the creators but you know what we're going to do now we're going to skip for now Cameroon's land is without a doubt very unique and rich, which is why, in context, you can kind of understand why the Germans, the French, the Belgians, and the English all tried to take their grab at it. Awesome. Essentially, Cameroon is like a resource gold mine. And they have gold mines too. Cameroon is typically described as Africa in miniature because it contains... Gold mines? Where? I did not know that. But yes, Africa in miniature is our name because we have a lot of cool things everywhere across the country. So, yes. Finally, Bobby, you say something that I agree with you. I mean, I guess because the only positive thing that you've said so far. Virtually every major gold mines too. Cameroon is typically described as Africa in miniature because it contains virtually every major climate and ecoregion found in all of Africa. They have coasts in the west, deserts and savanna in the north, mountains in the center, and jungles and rainforests inland to the east. In one country, you basically get an entire continent. Also, oh, did you hear that? Oh. It's the sound of eco-enthusiast budget travelers having seizures of joy. However, you can't just waltz into Cameroon. <laughs> eco-enthusiast budget travelers. I'm going to take on enthusiast budget travelers having seizures of joy. However, you can't just waltz into Cameroon and take on any region you want. You got to be a little careful. Cameroon still has some active volcanoes, including Mount Cameroon, the tallest mountain in Cameroon that last erupted in 2000. Okay, first of all, I studied in the University of Boya. 
I know it doesn't give me any credibility. In fact, as I'm saying that right now, I just realized that being in a town doesn't mean that you actually know what is happening in the town. So let me even clear that that stupid argument I was about to make. But being scared of going to Cameroon because the volcano is active, I'm like, why would the university be still there? And the university has been around since 1994. So it's one of those things that make me usually think about the fact that people, this is, I, I feel like this is why I'm making these videos. First, to educate myself. Secondly, to to really capture in real time how because of the information that people put on the internet we we don't know much about other countries because we just read about them like i mean i see here i do a reaction to ethiopia geography now and i'm like oh yeah i know ethiopia no i don't i i don't like i, I have an idea maybe but until i actually go there or do more research i may never actually know you know what it is about so this particular point for example about how active the volcano is like the people who go to boya go to college, get their degrees and leave, and they'll never even know that there's a Mount Cameroon there. So, anyway, let's continue. See, the thing is, Cameroon lies on the Cameroon Line, which is a geological region of volcanic activity that extends from the Gulf of Guinea on the chain of islands like Sao Tome and Principe, all the way inland through the area of the Oku volcanic fields that extend all the way to Lake Chad. Cameroon is also home to two of the only three known exploding lakes in the world. These are lakes that have magma under them. Two of the only three exploding lakes in the world. I don't know if we should be proud of that or sad, but that's pretty cool. And my friend Kiacha, uh, Kiacha Temke, who is a writer, he's currently studying an MFA in the University of Texas, I believe. He actually wrote a story that was sort of based on the lake that Barbie's about to talk about. Yeah, the Lake, lake Oak, um, yeah, Lake Nyos. Yeah. I'll put, actually, I'll put a link to the story in the description. You can go read it. It's called Bad Lake. Yeah. And the lake slowly three known exploding lakes in the world. These are lakes that have magma under them, and the lake slowly leaks carbon dioxide into the waters. And upon earthquakes or landslides and a rare catastrophic phenomena, the lake emits huge puffs. And I did not change my screen. Look at that. I got so carried away. <laughs> Lake Chad. Cameroon is also home to two of the only three known exploding lakes in the world. These are lakes that have magma under them and the lake slowly leaks carbon dioxide into the waters and upon earthquakes or landslides and a rare catastrophic phenomena, the lake emits huge puffs of carbon dioxide that in return can asphyxiate and kill any living creature and person in the direct vicinity. In 1986, the lake exploded and killed about 1,700 people and 3,000 animals and livestock. They were affected... Yep, that was... Uh... Yeah. Completely suffocated to death, and this was the first known and recorded incident of such a natural event. The mountainous area inland has humid rainforests and jungles that can be found, including some of the wettest places on Earth, and an abundance of wildlife, many of which are actually endemic to the area, including the incredibly rare Cross River Gorilla. If I told you I've never actually seen any of these animals, wait, oh, I think I saw one. Went to Limbe, and was it the Botanic Garden? I've forgotten the zoo in Limbe before I saw the animals. One of those things that when people hear them from Cameroon, which is an African country. I feel like they can't help it but ask if they are animals. I don't know if, I don't know if I call it race. I think it's mostly ignorant. <laughs> because more like you have no idea, you know, how the place is, you've never been anywhere close to it. And everything that you see shows that this is the way it is. So you cannot help but ask that question. So as I'm seeing this image right here, I can be like, I myself have never experienced this. So somebody asking me if I know about this, I'm like, No, bruh, I do not. But let's carry on. Further inland to the east, the land slopes into a plateau with even sparser populated regions where flocks of primates, birds, reptiles, and amphibians call home. Now, here's where things get interesting. When you head north, and specifically to the furthest north regions, everything gets dry and earthy. And that's the cool thing about Cameroon. It's the only country in Africa that claims sovereignty over regions that stretch all the way from the dense jungles of the Central African region to the north dry arid Sahel. Now, in this area, and specifically at the northernmost tip of the country, you reach Lake Chad, which is kind of drying up. Now, just like the arrows. <laughs> Where is the water going? Is it global warming or is it just. Yeah, what's happening? Sea, which we will reach Lake Chad, which is kind of drying up. Now, just like the Aral Sea, which we will talk about and discuss in about 87,926 years when we do the episode on Uzbekistan, in the past 50 years, Lake Chad has dramatically shrunk due to the growing demand for water by peoples in the area. Today, it's only at about 5% the size it originally was. Wow, that was in 2015, 5% the size, and this is almost 10 years, 
It's 2021. Four years left for it to be 10 years since this video was made. Hmm. I bet it's even been less than that. It was decades ago. Cameroon actually owns one of the largest portions of the lake that actually still has a substantial amount of water in it. The strange thing though is that even though the lake has dried, the land that the water once filled became loaded with plants and grasses, creating a strange green blot in the middle of what seems like a vast empty arid desert. You know For some reason this that this part makes me think of um the alchemist. If you've read the alchemist, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it. It's my favorite book in the world. I have a review on the channel if you want to I'm going to put a link somewhere if you're interested in seeing that. Plants and grasses creating a strange green blot in the middle of what seems like a vast empty arid desert. In a weird way, this actually allowed people to move into the land that was once underwater and cultivate it. Funny how people function that way. Now let's talk about these people. Look at that. This was the plan. This is the plan for the ads. We, we silence them and then we... Uh, you know, move it on. You know what I just realized? You will be able to know the kind of things that I see or that I... Because ads on YouTube are personalized to whoever is consuming the content. So the ads that I see are probably different from the ads that you see. So you will definitely be able to see the kind of ads which will show you the kind of content I consume. I just thought about that right now. Huh. Yeah, you can actually know more about me by watching my ads and actually listening to me. How cool is that? Or is it? I do not know. Let's see. Again, when it comes to Cameroon, it really is like an Africa in miniature. And that even applies to the people. Now, Cameroon doesn't really have a spe specific Cameroonian demographic. The country is made up. Thank you. This, th what he just said here, this is the thing that people fail to realize about the country. There is no like a Cameroonian, like, oh, if you're from Cameroon, then you have this. Thing in common there's no one like a cameroonian or say style or or face or even accent i feel like you cannot know that somebody's cameroonian until they tell you that they're cameroonian and even when you're cameroonian you cannot i mean you can recognize another cameroonian based on certain expressions manner of speaking and probably the context of the conversation but you can't just look at the cameroonian or listen to them talk and you just know that they're from cameroon so yes this is what he just said here about the fact that you cannot just group of us together it's, it's very true to the people now cameroon doesn't really have a specific cameroonian demographic the country is made up of over 250 people groups and tribes that have relatively lived alongside with each other peacefully the country Did he say peacefully i think he said peacefully no comment country has about 20 million people and is almost evenly divided between urban and rural populace. Now, it's really hard to get an exact ethnic ratio makeup, but in the most generalized format, Cameroonian Highlander tribes make up about 40% of the population, and coastal inland Bantu tribes make up about 30%. Then you have the Fulani and the Kirdi that also have large populations at about 10% each. The rest of the population is just kind of an other African... <laughs> Who are these people? Who are these people? And other Africans? What the hell? African <laughs> people group not affiliated with either of these groups, as well as a very small group of non-Africans making up less than 1%. Although each of these people... Wait, what? He's, he... I need to show you this right here. ...these groups, as well as a very small group of non-Africans making up less than 1%. Although each of these people groups speaks their own dialect, all the dialects kind of filter down into 24 language groups, which are then categorized into a few language families, like the Bantu and the Volta languages. Basically, if you live in the same general area, your neighbor, although from a different tribe, will still be able to communicate with you. Nonetheless, English and French are the official languages, however, French is more... Yep, about the, the language part of it. Even in my tribe, Bamileke, I did a, I did a reaction to his show, Bamileke, by the way, if you want to watch it, I'm going to put a link up here somewhere. Um, yeah, in my tribe, the languages are sort of similar. You can, you can understand what somebody is saying if you are close enough, geographically speaking, because my tribe has many villages spanning a large area of the West and I think parts of the Northwest region. So, yeah. Are widely spoken with you. Nonetheless, English and French are the official languages. However, French is more widely spoken. Only about 20% of the people speak English. Yes. And that has been not even a... People call it the Anglophone crisis, thinking that it's only about language. But if you understand the history, for example, you know, the Germans and French and British 
and the separation and the referendum and the, all that stuff like it's not just a language problem it's so much more than that but you you realize that if you don't if you cannot speak french in cameroon you have a harder time like yeah you have a, a harder time if you, to get work to to just be this english speaking people anglophones are treated like a, a minority like i'm not saying this because i'm trying to be political I've seen many instances where people you cannot you go to major offices and if you cannot communicate in French nobody cares. They'll speak to you in French and tell you that Cameroon is bilingual, but they will not be able to speak in English. And it's just sad. English fluently. However, French is more widely spoken. Only about 20% of the people speak English fluently, mostly in the northwest regions that used to be operated by the British. Exactly. However, eh, roughly about 40% of the people can actually understand English enough. This also means Mm. If you're Cameroonian and you're watching this, do you agree with what he just said that only about 40% of the population understands English? I feel like the number is higher. I mean, I know that might, if it's higher, it would be like 50%, which is not exactly true. Yeah, he's probably right. In fact, it might even be less. They might think about it, they might think that he might be less means that the country has an incredibly diverse culture can actually understand English enough. This also means that the country has an incredibly diverse culture of traditions, rituals, celebrations, customs, and even dance styles. And that's the thing about Cameroon. Every tribe kind of brings something to the table. For example, Cameroon is the only hmm. place where you can find the beehive-shaped Muscoom mud huts built by the Muscoom people. The Bamoon people for a short while invented one of the only few native African scripts Yes, this is what I was looking for a long time ago. My Ethiopian brothers and sisters. You remember when I was talking about um was it Amharic? The writing, right? The Bamun script, this is what I was looking for. We also had or have our own script. Alright. In the early 1900s, the Moon people for a short while invented one of the only few native African scripts in the early 1900s, the Bamoon syllabary alphabet. It was eventually cast into type in 1918, but then fell out of use in 1931. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We didn't even talk about the Fang people and their cool masks. So as you can see, Cameroon is like a smorgasbord of culture. However, one thing that it does kind of lack is, is political stability. I wish he was lying, but he's not. There is a facade of political stability and people living in fear and just baseline chronic dissatisfaction. Yeah. Ah, I knew there was a catch. This place seemed too perfect. Yeah, Cameroon does kind of rank a little low in Transparency International's rankings. They typically are in the upper 140s out of 176 countries listed. It partially has to do with the fact that the country has really only been under the leadership of one of two men since independence. The first president, Amadou Ahijo, and the second, Paul Biya, who has been president since 1982. Biya has... I think we should take a moment of silence for our country and all the troubles that we have. Yeah. <laughs> been criticized not really for and the second, Paul Bia, who has been president since 1982. Bia has been criticized not really for what he institutes, but rather for what he doesn't do. He makes very few public appearances and has an aloof reign over his country. Sometimes he'll be out of office for months hanging out in France, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on hotels and luxury items as riots break out in his own country. He's been accused of holding phony elections to justify his position in office and persecuting any opponents that try to step in the polls. Allegedly. You know, you always have to add this allegedly because the internet. So, uh, allegedly. Nonetheless, Bia does still kind of maintain national ties with other countries and kind of acts as like a national spokesperson. Now let's talk about whom he rubs shoulders with. Now, Cameroon wouldn't be shaped and molded into the Cameroon that it is today if it wasn't for the various investments and interactions that they've engaged with over the years. For starters, Cameroon has a few disputes with Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea over maritime borders and exclusive mm. economic zones. Some like will tell you that these issues have been mostly solved, but most will also tell you, eh. Canada and the U.S. have great relations with Cameroon. Cameroon is a huge hub for U.S. Peace Corps volunteers that help out with aid and HIV AIDS treatment centers, as well as agricultural development projects. Fun fact. Fun fact, uh, when I was, I think it was 13, 14, 15, I don't remember, I actually studied, uh, we had some Peace Corps volunteers who actually taught in a school back in Bafasam and I attended for a couple of weeks. I think it was, yeah, I was 14. Yeah, I just remember that right now that I actually took one of these classes. Good times. 
Good times. Projects. Canada not only started relations with Cameroon early, but in a funny way is very similar to Cameroon in that both countries share a culture of English and French division and influence. Et je suis dans le prochain épisode. <laughs> And I'm in the next episode. So the next episode after this will be Canada, I guess. Now, as a former colony, Cameroon clicks very well with France. Both countries have numerous militaristic, economic, cultural, and construction agreements. The president is a frequent visitor. Je t'aime, ma petite citrouille. <laughs> I love you, my little lemon. <laughs> is it lemon or... Yeah. Visitor to Paris, almost a little too frequent. And I guess one thing that he can be credited for is having successfully secured France's love for Cameroon. As for their best friends, however, Cameroonians would probably say their neighbors in the East, Chad, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. These countries understand each other pretty well on both a cultural and diplomatic level. Peoples of the North resonate well with Chad, whereas people in the East and South gel well with the Central African Republic and the Democratic Republic of Congo. All four countries speak French and have centuries of historical ties that go beyond brotherhood. In conclusion, you have this amazing, lush, diverse country with some legislative issues and gorillas and lakes that can suffocate you. Like, either one. Stay tuned, Canada is coming up next. Bob, that was Geography Now Cameroon and I noticed that most of, peop most of people who watch my videos tend to live around this part. So if you're staying here, you're an MVP, leave me a comment below for the video that you want to see on this channel next, uh, another reaction or something similar. But yeah. I I don't know. I feel excited that our country has been able to feature on this platform and somebody actually did the research to talk about the things that we have, things that we don't have, our history, geography, politics, and all that stuff. And now I sort of understand how Ethiopians felt about the Geography Now video. Because when I did the Geography Now uh, Ethiopia reaction, I asked people, how accurate do you think this was? And people came and said, you know, it's one video, it's a few minutes, you cannot do all, cramp up all this history in a couple of videos. And that's true. Bobby is doing a great job and it's amazing to provide all these facts and make it funny and make it interesting. Like, I mean, I had a hard time in school remembering dates from history, but I feel like if I had this kind of platform where I come and watch about countries and learn more in such a fun way, at least grasp the ideas, that'd be great. But overall... The accuracy of the facts is not 100%. There are things that are not exactly true, things that need to be verified, but I don't blame him at all. Like, I don't, he would not be able to travel and come to Cameroon and visit. And so now I, I, I really understand why watching the Ethiopia Now video and making statements like, oh, why is this? What is that? Completely eliminates the fact that this is not the entire story. This is just a, a snippet in time. But overall, I feel like my country still has a lot of work to do. And I think after everything that Barbie's talked about, you know, we have a very rich country, whether it's culturally, culinarily, uh, the people, the languages, the intelligence. We have, a, we have a rich country. But the leadership in the country makes it very, very hard for people to grow and thrive and leverage that richness for a bigger community impact. So... Yeah, that was uh, Geography Now, Cameroon, by uh, Geography Now with Barbie. And if you've watched the video up to this particular point, let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you have a country that you'd like me to review? Or do you have a video that you want me to see? In the meantime, I'm going to put a playlist right here for the reactions I've done before. You can watch them. And then there's going to be a video here that YouTube will recommend for you best for the viewer from my videos. And yeah, in the meantime... You take care of yourself, do your best, let God take up the rest. And uh, while there's life, there's hope. I'll see you in the next video, my friend. You have a blessed day and thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now be a good time to do that. And I'll see you in the next video.